Sean, today's video, let's talk about three drills that we see golfers do all the time. A lot of it is self-prescribed medication, and we actually see, we're actually able to measure the results from these drills, and we see it do way more harm than good with so many golfers. Yeah, if you just randomly pick a drill because you saw X player doing it, right. it probably doesn't even apply to you. But these particular three, one, the three drills that we're going to talk about today, if you do them and you definitely don't need them or a piece of what they help you provide, yes. they can actually derail your swing. I know because I've tried all of them and I've messed my swing up. They'll remove compression from your ball striking. You'll Club have speed. it moving slower and they will just make golf way less fun in general. Let's take a look at what the three drills are. So on the first drill, we see this all the time and I can probably count on the, th the thousands of golfers that we see and probably count on my one hand the number of golfers that actually needed to do this drill. Yeah, so this one here, I mean, I did it when I was growing up because I thought I needed it, right? Right. I would take a you glove. You probably saw somebody was really good doing it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I would take a glove and put it not up in, under my armpit as much, but kind of around the elbow. So you're trying to connect the elbow to the ribs throughout yeah, the swing. Yeah, and I would try to hit and play like this. You know, I was a fairly good little athlete, so I could hit the ball like this, but what I didn't realize is how bad it was it was giving me issues with my swing. It got me a really flat back swing, and a lot of times I ended up kind of getting steep and out over it, and also it slowed my club head speed down. And what we figured out is, you know, over the years, if we just think about, we take away the ball for a minute in terms of speed. If I want to throw this as far as I could, I by no means would keep my elbow against my side. I would let this arm float up a little bit. I would get my elbow up and out a little and I could sling this thing so much farther that way than I could from here. There's actually some planing advantages in the backswing for letting this arm lift. Yeah. And there's a number of speed advantages in the downswing for bringing it back down. You yeah. remove all of those advantages if you're trying to like button this up to the ribs. Absolutely right. Um, so that's kind of the first one is keeping that elbow pin and not only does it keep it pinned it keeps it a little too in front it's okay to let this float a little bit just as long as it stays kind of somewhere near where your right. chest is when you face the camera you definitely don't want to be way in here and that can cause you some of that problem as well right so let's take a look at uh, some gears images here and show you exactly what good players do relative to this right we'll call it elbow area yeah to lower the, to the tricep cage. bicep to the rib cage and show you exactly how these things kind of jive with good players and what maybe you're trying to do you're looking at a professional golfer here who everyone considers to have a very aesthetically good looking swing as well as a very athletic swing. We chose him because he's very representative of what great players do with their right arm in the backswing. To see that movement, we need to position him so we can accurately see the lifting motion of his right arm as he swings. And that's done by using the body lines we get from gears. We're gonna rotate him at each phase of his backswing so we can look directly down his shoulder line. This allows us to isolate his right arm lift and measure it to a spine angle. Doing this will let you see exactly the amount his upper right arm lifts as he moves through his backswing. As you can see here, he has a classic setup with very neutral body lines. His right arm is elevated 36 degrees above his spine angle. We're going to use this 36 degree angle as his starting point and reference it for the rest of his backswing. As he moves to the end of his takeaway here when the shaft is parallel to the ground and still keeping our view looking down the shoulder line, we can see how much his arm is lifted at this point in the swing. Not much really, just six degrees, but the key here is that it is lifting and not staying connected to his side. As we move him up to left arm parallel, we can really start to see just how much lifting is occurring as he moves on up the swing. He's gone from 36 degrees at setup to 53 degrees here at left arm parallel. A 17 degree lift to this point in his backswing, or roughly a three inch lift from where he was at address. This is him at the top of his backswing. He elevated his upper right arm 29 degrees from where he started at address. That's roughly a five inch lift from address to here at the top. The key takeaways being that we do not see Good players keep their arms tight to the sides. The arm needs to elevate. If it doesn't, the right arm will tend to bend too much going into the top. 
allowing the arm to lift allows you the ability to reach a good top of the backswing without excessive right arm bend. That allows you to keep width in your backswing, which is a big benefit for you being able to generate both speed and accuracy in your downswing. So on our second drill, we see from, well, we can always tell golfers when they come in and get a lesson if they're a big mirror guy and do a lot of mirror work. Yeah. We see this most common with the golfers who spend a lot of time in front of the mirror. Yeah. And mirror is a great training tool if you use it correctly. But we see this with golfers who are trying to load up in the right side or trying to complete their backswing. All those things mean different things to people, but we see this one issue pop up nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100. Well, I can talk about this one uh, because you know this is a problem that I had because I was always working on my swing growing up. It's probably half the reason I became a golf instructor. I was all, so into the technique, <laughs> yeah. right? And I wanted to look, have it look a certain way. So I was always having the mirror set up and I was watching myself and I would pose these different spots in the swing and I would pose a lot of top of back swings. And yep. what I was taught and what I thought was correct was to pose the top of the back swing with the maximum amount of weight on my right foot. Um, so, because I thought that would mean you were loaded, right? Well, you were completing the backswing. Yeah, I was completing it, and I was, I thought I was supposed to be loaded, so when I started down, I could push off right. and hit hard like a baseball swing, because I was a baseball player too. So, what I didn't realize it was hurting me is that as we look at these really uh, high level players, is that by the time they get to the top, they've already kind of let this kind of recentering happen, so they're more 50 50 when they get to the top of the swing. And by going over here to the right, I had I struggled for a while with um, getting the pressure early enough to the left foot, and Mike has obviously helped me with that. And he used to swing catalyst and learning what good players do, but that is hurting your game 100%. If you're drilling, stopping at the top with the majority weight in your right foot, right. it's throwing your timing off, and also it's going to cost you clubhead speed, accuracy, and everything that goes along with that. Yeah, there there are two kind of completions to the backswing we can talk about. Mm -hmm. One is completing the body shift, just laterally speaking. And for most high-level golfers, that body is completed shifting to the right for a right-handed golfer somewhere in this window to about left arm parallel. So early in the backswing. Again, yeah. left arm parallel is half the golf swing. So it's in that first half of the golf swing. Now, then I think this is where this issue is probably, it probably stems the most from. It's Then there's the rotation of the golf swing, right? So golfers have a hard time sometimes understanding that they can move this way as they're still rotating back. So I don't have to keep moving this way to finish my rotation. Exactly. I can move this way early and still rotate as I recenter. And it's more about getting this right shoulder to move back to the target. That kind of pulls some mass that way and makes it very natural. Just like you would do if you were gonna throw that club down. Yeah, the I would do if I was gonna throw it this way, I would go, I would kind of sling it to the right. I would kind of look, recenter this way and then whoosh, I yes. would wing it, right? Yes. And if you wanted to throw it fast. Exactly. Yep. And, you know, it's a power game now, right? It's exactly. You got to right. get the ball far out there. It's way more fun, it makes the game easier. So, why would you do things and move in a way and drill into your game? Things are going to slow you down. Yeah, you're kind of stripping away. This drill strips away so much dynamic movement. Yes, it does. <laughs> it's like paint stripper for your golf swing. So, let's look at a, gears, a few gears pros here and show you exactly how you want to be moving with regards to completing your backswing. One similarity we see with amateurs and pros is that they both move off the ball in the backswing. And what we're talking about is the center of the pelvis and the center of the chest moving away from the target in the backswing. The big difference, however, is when those centers move. That's what really separates the AMs from the pros. And so now we're going to look at a different pro from the database. His upper and lower centers are marked here by the green dots on his body. At setup, Gears marks those as 0.0, .0 inches, so every movement from here on is relative to this starting point. We're also going to put these yellow lines down each leg. This is something you should get into the habit of doing when you film your own swing from this face on view. These lines are going to come in handy here in just a second. As our pro gets moving, you'll see he reaches his max movement off the ball here at the end of his takeaway when the shaft is parallel to the ground. Either before this spot or by this spot is a very common point for our pros to reach their maximum distance off the ball, typically between one to two inches with an iron. For AMs, we often see little to no movement by this point in the swing. Notice how he's covered that yellow line running along the outside of his right leg. He's now going to use the rest of his backswing to start shifting himself forward. And by the time he gets to the top, 
he's pretty much recentered himself between these two yellow lines we put up an address. He started his shift back to the left as he continued to rotate closed in the backswing. That's a skill you must learn to improve your golf swing. Now he can start the club down from basically the same place he was at his setup, which leaves him a much more manageable amount of ground to cover in that tiny quarter of a second or less than a quarter of a second downswing. Because he's given himself most of his backswing and the early part of his downswing to shift left, to shift forward, he can now stabilize his movement before impact. But when you get to the top, load it on your right side, that's something that you lose the ability to do, costing you both distance and accuracy, a heavy price to pay for poor timing. All right, Sean, our third drill is one that kind of happens after that change of direction. This is more of a downswing transitional drill. And it's with regards to how the knees operate relative to one another. We see a big trend with, and we'll even see golfers who come in and see us, and they'll, they'll like explain what they're doing and they'll grab the empty bucket of balls and put it between their legs and try to drop the balls or drop the bucket. Uh -huh. Hopefully the balls aren't there. Drop the bucket early in the downswing and they're getting the hands in kind of really low, knees really spread, hips are really square, all of those things. And that's not really what we want happening in the downswing. Yeah, and it's it's not what we see either with the best players right. when we look at them on gears. I think, you know, if you were a massive slider, I think that's where this kind of comes into play. Right, right. But again, if you don't need it and you overdo it, you're going to be um, continually pressuring the back foot at the wrong time in the swing. Because when you go to the top and drop the bucket, you're actually moving your legs in a way that would almost keep pressure on your trail side. That's exactly right. And, you know, I, and I've, I've done some, you know, research and, and and uh, had a lot of conversations with really smart people. One of them happens to be the, one of the top biomechanists, golf biomechanists in the world, and he says, that move is completely unnecessary. You don't need to be moving your legs the opposite way when you start down in some search for clubhead speed. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of that look is a result of the deception from video images. The camera. Right? Because the body from a face on view, the body's rotated. Now, if I just bend my knee, it looks like I've spread my knee, right? Especially if the camera's a little off tilter. But with gears, we're able to, and we'll show you that in just a second, we're able to track the locations of the knees and you're gonna see they don't separate. Yeah. They actually start to move together a slight bit. Now, the other side of that coin is golfers that get up here and really trying to fire the hips and get all this. Like, that's not good either. No, again, you don't, you don't want too much of the other things right. as well. Right, but in either case, we see issues with it. But we see so many golfers who don't have that problem thinking this move is gonna give them some magical advantage in the downswing, and it it's just, just something it. that we doesn't see. It really retards what the pressure does. It doesn't shift the pressure forward like we would wanna see in good swings at that point. And it really makes that, that delivery club phase. So if you're, if you're here, right, you haven't delivered the club yet. Delivery starts when shaft's parallel. Then you have to really kind of shove forward. Launch late launch late and that's something that we don't see the best players in the world do you want to be stable at that delivery phase so you can find the middle of the club face more often and add some speed to your swing whether or not the knees are moving closer together or farther apart is not something we can see accurately from a face on camera angle or down the line camera angle for that matter to really see what's happening you'll want this worm's eye view to look at exactly how the knees are moving all the little white dots you're seeing on the screen are the actual 32 markers we place on each golfer and his club when doing a gears capture. Most 3D systems use three, six, or 12. So you can see why we like using gears because it has so many data points and so much resolution that we can see what it is the golfers are actually doing. So we're gonna look at our pro's knee markers. These are the markers actually placed right on the outsides of his knees and then we're gonna turn them red so you can see both his left and right knee movements throughout his entire swing. And then for reference, we're gonna put these two green lines through each marker here at setup so you can see if the knees are moving towards or away from the target. Then we're gonna use this measurement gauge to track whether his knees move closer or farther apart. This pro is one of those guys who many feel spreads his knees in the downswing to quote unquote drop the bucket in his downswing. So this is a great example to use. As he starts moving, we can see that both of his knees are moving towards his right. And by the time he gets to the top here, 
they are nearly exactly the same width from one another as they were at setup. So at the top, both of his knees have moved to the right and they've also done so without any separation. As he moves from the top down to left arm parallel, we can see both knees now moving back to the left. Notice how his right knee did not stay back while his left knee rotated away from it. They both moved forward and they moved closer together. So instead of beginning to drop the bucket in the downswing, he's actually started to squeeze the bucket. Now he's at shaft parallel coming down. This is where the bucket should be falling to the ground. But as you can see here, his knees have continued to move closer together, squeezing the bucket even more. So in the backswing, we've had both knees move away from the target. In the downswing, both knees have moved towards the target and closer together all the way to the shaft parallel spot in the downswing. Then as he moves into impact, his knees are the closest together at any point so far in the swing. So his knees really never do separate at any point in the downswing. His right knee didn't hang back while the left knee rotated away from it. And he would not have dropped the bucket at any point in the downswing. So when you're hearing about how the knees move during the swing, you first have to know that you cannot accurately see knee movement from the typical down the line or face on camera angles. Secondly, understand that the movement you just saw this pro make is very typical knee movement for great players and much easier to do and easier on the body than what we've seen several amateurs trying to do with their knees. All right, so hopefully now you've seen why we're not big fans of these drills, you know, just measuring what good players do. Now let's take a look at some alterations to these drills that can help you out in your golf swing. Yeah, so the first one, you know, let's put the glove kind of under the arm like mm -hmm. we had it before. But what I want you to do this time, as you start making your way back, this glove will drop out pretty early and you'll get some space under here. Yes. Right, you see how early that dropped out. If I kept it in there too long, I would get my arms a little too low, right? Yep. And if I dropped it out immediately, I might have too much out this way. So pretty good little drills. It's a good to synchronize the arm lift with yeah. the body turn. Yeah. And I think that's that's a big issue for golfers. The body should turn and provide the depth. The arms have to provide the up in the swing. Yeah, and just to tie this, the first time I saw this, I did not come up with this. I saw Vijay Singh doing it when he was number one in the world. Hmm. I watched him at Bay Hill. The best players do not have this arm pinned. It's up and a, it's somewhat a little bit out. It's not pinned down here. And he was doing the opposite. He was trying to get his arm up. And again, he, he was winning tournaments left and right back then. He, he's still one of the better ball strikers that Absolutely. played. Absolutely. So that's drill number one. Okay, let's come back and look at drill number two. All right, so for drill number two, we're gonna complete, air quotes, complete our backswing at the right time. Yeah. So we're still gonna use, we're gonna use the camera as the mirror. Okay. So instead of going to the top and making sure you have a good top of the backswing, let's go to left arm parallel. So here I am, left arm parallel. Yep, yeah, even, I actually, it's a great point. I actually like to see it just a little under left arm parallel. Yeah. You can feel on your right side, you can feel loaded on the right side. Yeah, here's where you wanna be loaded. Yep. My left heel is lightening a little bit. My knees are changing. And I've got the left arm kind of in this area here. Yep, yep. All right, from there, this is your starting point for this drill. Now you're going to go to the top as you recenter. Yep, I'm just letting the left heel kind of come back down. I'm settled into the ground here with 50 50 basically. Boom. You now, can feel that. You're completing your turn as you recenter. When I see golfers do this drill for the first time, they'll get here and then they'll go. Yeah. Like they'll unwind 100%. to get to the left. You've got to get into the habit of completing your swing as you reset. If there's a magic move, we've done it before, that, that's it right there. Yep, all right, so that's drill number two. Let's come back for the third. All right, drill number three. Let's create some dynamic movement and let the lower body respond to that yep. naturally. Okay, so you know this is called the crow hop swing or the happy Gilmore happy swing. Happy Gilmore, yeah. You know, it's good to do it, Tom, just to see how would your body react if right. you took away the golf ball and just trying to get this club moving as fast as you possibly can? It's like, it's a good litmus test. Like, am I trying to do something athletic or am I doing something kind of forced and contrived? Yeah, so both hands on the club. Yep. And the crow hop, if you didn't play baseball, um, it's when the player kind of stutter steps like that and then lands, it yep. gives you a little more momentum and the timing of it lets you launch the ball yes. farther, right? So I'll do it upside down here so I don't kill Mike, but I'm gonna crow hop and I'm gonna put the brakes on 
I'm gonna kind of at this shaft parallel. The body. Yeah, yep. and I'm going to see what my body looks like because yep. that would be where it's braced off again to, to accelerate the last segment, which is the, the wrist to the club, right? right? So I'm going to do it real quick and I'm going to put the brakes on, okay? okay? Crow hop, boom. I'd be like this. Yep, and if you remember from our gears images we just saw, it's exactly what you see with the best I'll players. I'll stop a little earlier. So you can see the legs starting to move in a way that toward the end I would extend again yes. and create that whip. But I, what I wouldn't do is I wouldn't, I would not spread my legs like that because it, it wouldn't assist me in getting this thing going any faster. Exactly right. So just, and then that's a great kind of litmus test for any drill. It's like, is it helping my athleticism or is it hurting my athleticism? When you were also demonstrating that you weren't you weren't crow hopping with the no, arm pin. Pinned. So you have to do a lot of things really well to do something athletic, right? You really do. Apply that to the golf swing rather than the other way around. Don't try to apply golf positions to athletic movements. Apply athleticism to the golf swing. And see Built the company on top of that. Yeah. And you will start moving a lot better. So give these variations of those bad drills a try. We know we're gonna help you out. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and give it a like. Also, if you have any questions about today's video or you have an idea of a video that you want us to shoot, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. We read every single comment. We also respond to the comments. So again, leave us a comment if you have any questions or there's anything you'd like to see. Now, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. We have videos coming out every single week and we don't want you to miss one. So by clicking subscribe, that ensures you're notified right away when a new video comes out. And hey, if you wanna add instant distance to your drive, and we all do, everybody wants more distance, go ahead and click the link in the pinned comment below. You're gonna see a link. Click on it, it's gonna take you to a page. You're gonna enter your name and email address. We're gonna send you an email where you're gonna get access to instant distance which is a video training that we put out we know it's going to help you we know we're going to see you farther down the fairway